Yo, what's up, swag? You already know what time it is, man. It's your boy, Keon Lar, aka AKL Swag. Back here with a video, man. Look, man, we are back here again with another Matt B. Great reaction, another Colorado video, man. Here's what they're not telling you about Colorado in Oregon. The game coming up, man. Let's check it out. You'll see what that boy Matt B. Great talking about. Y'all already know how I keep it real. I say what I want to say. And, yeah, let's get into it. Listen there. Oregon, in their last three matchups against Power 5 teams, they've barely won or they've lost. I don't know why Oregon does this, but they've always done it. And it's why I'm picking Colorado to win this game. Colorado's going to win. It's going to be a hot score. I didn't plan on making this video, but I saw some interesting comments on last night's video. And if you haven't seen it, go check it out. Where we previewed and we predicted the Colorado versus Oregon matchup. And in that video, if you haven't seen it, spoiler alert, you might want to fast forward 10 seconds, but I'm just going to spoil it for you right now. Yeah. I, I mean, everybody's prediction is going to be different. I still got to drop a prediction uh, for the game also, you guys, but yeah. Predicted, and I'm still predicting Colorado to pull off the upset 31 to 30. Final score, lock it in. Don't worry, I'm not going back on my word in this video, but here's the thing, and like I was saying in the intro, the main reason I'm making this video is because I saw some really interesting comments in last night's video. And there's also some other things I want to speak on and piggyback off of, and that's what we're going to do in tonight's video. I don't think you guys are mine. Anytime we make a Colorado video, you guys tend to like it, and of course, I enjoy making it. But check on this comment right here from Chris Davis. It got a lot of likes. Oregon stats are extremely inflated due to the game they played against Portland State where they scored 81 points. Now, if you don't know what Mr. Yeah. Chris Davis is referring to, I showed you guys in that video some of Oregon's stats on offense. Oregon didn't really play stated, nobody. Yeah, I think Oregon's got a pretty dang good offense. I think we can agree They didn't play nobody, But for though. me, at least, when I read a comment like this, I get a sense of some hater energy. And trust me, I understand the point you're trying to make. Oh, well, they played a bad team, and they put up they a did. ton of points in that game, but they still did it. Let me give That's you true. a different example so I can put this into a better perspective. This is the equivalent to you seeing some super jack dude who can bench press 405 pounds, lift 85 pound dumbbells for curls, and you're like, oh, well, he can only do that because he's on steroids. He's only stronger than me because he's on the roids. He's on the juice. No. Granted, yeah, you're right. You didn't lie, but he's still stronger than you. It doesn't matter how he's stronger than you. He's stronger. Yeah. That is how I view the situation. Like, for example, Mr. Chris here. So are you trying to tell me and everybody else that Oregon's offense isn't good because they got inflated? No, the offense is good. State? Is that what you're trying to say? Well, they played it's it nobody. Off as, at least to me. And yet again, keep in mind, I'm not advocating for Oregon. I have predicted Colorado to win this ball game. But for you Oregon to try to sit up here losing. and discredit Oregon's offense, come on, man. I, I can't get down with that. <laughs> Look at this comment. Yo, this is the same dude that commented. I used <laughs> his comment where he said, Oregon is going to clap Colorado. He doubled down on it. He said, Oregon is going to rock them. I like that. He's giving the same energy. That's your opinion, and you're entitled to it. But here's my biggest question to everybody in the comment section. Even if Oregon wins, do you got Oregon just completely destroying Colorado? I have a hard time believing what is the spread on this game? 21 points. I have a hard time believing that Oregon's going to win by 21 or more points. Shout out this comment from Jin Wu. 38-31 Colorado or 45-38 Colorado. Smelling an upset this I week. See, I see that, but I see them winning, though. Colorado hmm, winning. That's interesting. What do y'all think about that? I think we're all in the same boat here. For Colorado to even compete in this game, Shadur's going to have to go off and throw for it, what, bare minimum? 350 pass yards and that's what would concern me if i'm a colorado fan you are extremely one-dimensional you got about five six seven great players and that's it the rest of them are mediocre the difference is oregon has a lot of good players a lot of solid players but when it comes down to it at the end of the day colorado has more star players so that's why that's it's true. an intriguing matchup because people don't understand this in football and basketball, you just need a couple star players and you can win a championship. Because what people yep. don't realize is star players, they make up for those weaknesses. You can game plan around them. That's a different conversation for a different day, but it's the same thing Alabama did the past two years with Bryce Young. Alabama last year and year before wasn't really that good. The difference was Bryce Young just covered everything. Got a different perspective here. Oregon will run circles around the buff defense. They will run for 250 plus yards and pass for 250 plus. 45-21 Ducks. I like that score. A little too high, but it seems reasonable. I see all these other Oregon fans saying, yeah, 52-10 Oregon. That's yeah. just not going to happen, but I could see something like this, something along these lines. But referring to this, the 250-plus rushing yards, 
That's actually what I'm looking forward to the most, the Colorado's defense front seven. Because if you watch that Nebraska game, you know the front seven for Colorado, immaculate. They looked unreal. They were amazing. I don't know if they can ever play that good again, but I want to see if their front seven can look good against a high-powered offense like Oregon. Colorado's well, passing defense is awful. They're going to give up at least 250 yards through the air. That's almost a given. But here's one of your X factors. Can you stop Oregon's run? If you can't stop the rush attack, you have not a shot in the dark to win this game. This is also key and we're throwing in there. I've heard rumors and I've seen many people say this in the comment section. I'll pop up one right here stating that Alton McCaskill, which is a pretty dang good running back for Colorado, he's going to be making his debut. That's something to pay attention to. And I've also heard word around the block that there's going to be some other key players for Colorado making their debut as well. That'd be something to pay attention to. But a lot of new dudes. Attack, it's been awful. So that's probably what they're thinking about throwing out McCaskill in there. Colorado is only averaging a miserable 61 rushing yards per game. Bad, 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 to say the least. I think we can all agree on this. It hasn't been pretty, and it hasn't been good. But now that I think about it, we should probably also talk about this. And I mentioned it in previous video yesterday, but I didn't talk about it a lot. How big of a loss is it that Travis Hunter isn't going to be playing? Well, let's do it this way. How many points do you think Travis Hunter is worth on the field? Remember, he plays offense and defense. I'm going to say Travis Hunter is worth, I think we can agree on this, seven points, eight points, something like that. Maybe that's too much. Maybe Colorado will go out here in their offense, won't skip a beat. But we saw it last week. That offense, it struggled mightily against Colorado State. And Oregon's defense, much better. To me, at least, I don't think Travis Hunter is a huge loss on offense. I think he's a huge loss on defense because that defense is terrible. Colorado's offense is pretty good. Defense, not so good. So that's Yeah, their defense has to get better. But let's talk about Oregon. We gotta defense Oregon has to get better. Shout out to the Ducks. And I've had a couple Oregon fans tweet at me saying, yo, man, I can't believe you picked Colorado. Why are you picking Colorado? Blah, 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 blah. Well, my friend, let me give you a deeper analyzation and explanation. Here's a little fun fact for you. But a lot of people aren't throwing this in there. Oregon, in their last three matchups against Power 5 teams, they've barely won or they've lost. In their final game last year against Oregon State, they lost 38-34. to That's yeah. one Power 5 team. In their bowl game against North Carolina, they barely won by one point, 28-27. That's two. They opened up the season in Portland State that is not a Power 5 team, and then they played Texas Tech. That is a Power 5 team. Lost. And in this Texas Tech game, as you can see right here, they won 38-30. to If you didn't watch this game, you're probably thinking, oh, it was an easy win, and it was not. They probably should have lost. Oregon, similar to Colorado, is lucky they're 3-0. My point is, and the reason Bo I'm not the best quarterback, you just gotta bring that pressure. Bad habit of playing down to the competition. They're better than Portland. I don't know why Oregon does this, but they've always done it. And it's why I'm picking Colorado to win this game. And I want you to take a look at this. In this Texas Tech game, you might assume, well, maybe Bo Nix had a couple interceptions or a couple of fumbles, something like that. And no, that wasn't the case. He played good. Bo Nix was 32 for 44. That's solid. 359 pass yards. That's really good. Two touchdowns to zero. He be throwing that though. I'm not going to say he played the best game. He be the launching that hole. the greatest performance, I'd give him a B plus. And still, even with Bo Nix playing good slash great, they barely won. Let's throw this in there he as well. He be launching that bitch, bro. Oh, my thinking, God. Man, I bet he had an amazing game. And no, that wasn't the case. He had not one, not two, count them, three interceptions. One of those was a pick six. Check how many yards the, game. Well, dang, the other, the other um, quarterback had last That's week. wins. But here's the key stat, and I'm going to bore you and read all of all these stats because I'm not a nerd. Here's the key one I'm going to circle. Texas Tech had four turnovers. Oregon had zero. And yet, Texas Tech had a shot to win this game at the end. So, hey, man, you know what I'll take away from that game? If your Bill Sanders can protect the ball and just throw two touchdowns, Colorado's going to win. <laughs> a lot of people think it's so far-fetched for Colorado to win this game, but when you break it down, it's not. And maybe I'm wrong. Y'all, this gonna be uh it's gonna be a high score game. If they win against Colorado State like this, it's gonna be a high score game. Shador and what's his name gonna be throwing that bitch. Shador had 348 yards. And the the Fowler dude, he threw he threw for three TDs, three INTs, and it had 367 yards. So Shador and the other dude, they were launching that bitch. I expect Shador to have either 400 or 300 and something, and Bo Nix to have 300 and something, too. Some yards. Wouldn't, Wouldn't be the first time, by the way. I see, them, I see them going the back and forth. 42 to 7, something like that. But for me, at least, I've watched Oregon all throughout this year, and I've watched every single second of Colorado's games. I just don't see that happening, and I don't. Oregon isn't a dominating team. They're just not. 
They're just not a team that gives me the sense, feel, and belief that they're going to go out here and boat race Colorado. Maybe they score a lot of points on them, but I think they'll also give up a lot of points. And that's why I'm extremely confident in my score prediction of 31 to 30. I think that's perfect. Not too high, not too little, right in the middle. It's a sweet spot. And just like this comment says right here, it's the last one, and we'll get a move on or we'll end up the video. This person said, I'm with you. I've been telling people if you have an elite coaching staff or elite coach, in my bad, they can create a good scheme to minimize their weaknesses. And yeah. Colorado's skill position players on offense can make any game a shootout. 41 to 38 Colorado. That's what I'm yeah. talking about. And I should have been talking about this way more often on the videos. We need to give a ton of credit to Colorado's coaching staff. They That's have true. done more than a heck of a job. A-plus performance. Colorado knows they're not as talented as Oregon, but they're going to minimize that. And how do you minimize it? You get your star players the ball 98, 99% of the time. No disrespect to any of the other Colorado players, but this isn't an overall great team. You just try to make do with what you got outside of your star players or your starters at least. Because what hurts Colorado a lot is they like depth, and they'll build that up over the next couple of years while yeah. there's times there. For now, at least, yes, their starters can play with anybody, but once you get past that, eh, not so much. It's going to be a heck of a game, man, heck of a game, but I do want to come up here and add some things to the preview we did yesterday. I'm curious. Let me know. You're hey, I like it. Y'all get ready for the prediction.